It's an exciting day today because this is the first video I've made by request for you guys. Um, so we're going to talk about the six lines in the Gene Keys. Specifically, we're going to talk about the six lines in the activation sequence because this is a massive topic and I could go on for hours. Um, and I want to make sure that you're not overwhelmed and that you can take something away from this. So where and what are the six lines? They are in your profile. What you're gonna see, go to genekeys.com, get your profile, and you'll see a bunch of spheres, and it'll be a number, one through 64, a dot, and then a number one through six. And those numbers one through six are your line numbers. Now, those six lines, you're gonna have potentially a different number in each sphere, or you might have some spheres with the same number. What's important to know is that that energy is constant throughout all of the spheres. So a first line is a first line, a sixth line is a sixth line, a third line is a third line, regardless of what sphere it's in. However, each sphere, because it represents a different arena of your life, sort of refracts that energy in a slightly different way. And so within each sphere, the energy shows up slightly differently. And that's what makes it such a complex topic. Now at its core, it's the exact same thing. And it's important to remember that. When you combine your gene key and your line, you are able to tell a story. So for example, my evolution gene key is 42, which is expectation, detachment, and celebration. And I am a sixth line there, which we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but it is education and surrender. So I have detachment and surrender, and it tells a very clear story, right? I have a tendency to get attached to things. I have a hard time letting things go, and I need to surrender in order for that to happen. It's not rocket science sticking these lines and these spheres together. Um, I will tell you, this is the tip of the iceberg and I really encourage you to study this wisdom. This is not a wisdom, the gene keys, that you can just pick up, that you can learn in a quick beat, that you can look at your profile, think about it for a few days and understand. This is something that needs to work through you and that you need to come back to and contemplate is a, a participatory knowing. So I'm watching this series with a guy named John Verveke, which if you're not, follow him on YouTube. It is incredible. It's called Awakening from the Meaning Crisis. And he talks about this idea of participatory knowing. So not knowing here, but knowing here and here, like understanding how this thing shows up in your life. And that takes time. It needs to sneak in. Your life's work sphere, the very first sphere of the activation sequence, those six lines are actually what is written up here right now. So line one, you are the creator. You are the one who goes within, searches and pulls something out, something new to offer to the world. You need stability. You are the base, the foundation of all new ideas. And so you need to be both stable in yourself and you need to bring that idea forward with stability for the world. So if you are marching in somebody else's footsteps or replicating what somebody else has done, you really need to go inside and think about how you can bring something totally new to that situation. And, and that's really important. You don't need to change your life for these things. You don't need to change your life for the spheres. You need to understand how to allow this to play through you in your current circumstances. That's what we, we do over and over again. We, we need to go on a retreat or do a plant medicine. You need to figure out how to bring this knowledge and wisdom home now. Line two is the dancer. So line two is about gliding through life. It's about um, playing. It's about interacting with the world and people. It's about letting things roll off of your back. It's, it's so flowy. And I'm a second line in my 
purpose and my radiance. So I, I understand this line deeply. It's this ability that I have to like pick things up quickly. People always look at me and are like, how do you just look so comfortable in doing X, Y, and Z? And it's because I have this second line down low. And second lines are here to, to change the way that people respond to the world, the way that people move through the world. Third line is the changer. And third lines are here to learn through the school of hard knocks. They're here to learn through experience. They're here to change. They're here to change their environment. They're here to change their internal environment. Here to have tons of different experiences and to give other people tons of different experiences so that they can learn what serves them and what they're here to do. This third line energy can be a little bit Third lines can look around and, and think, man, I wish I just had some stability in my life. How come everyone else's life seems to be on this straight path and I'm all over the map? Um, but, but that all over the map is, is your way of walking your straight path. And so making sure that you don't wish for something else. All right, fourth line, you are the server and you are here to love other people. You are here to be a part of a community, um, to, to show support to people. You, are, you get lit up when you're with those people that are close to you and you are designed to engage with those people. You're designed to offer them things and help them to grow. You're designed to help people change the way people feel about other people because you model love for the people that matter in your life. Fourth lines are different from a fifth line in that typically you're operating in a community that you know and, and, and are familiar with. Contrast that with a fifth line, it's much more impersonal. You are, you might have a community of hundreds or thousands of people, many of whom you don't personally know, but who um, respect you, respond to you, look to you for leadership and guidance. So let's move to the fifth line. The fifth line is the line of the fixer. So that is the, um, the person that is here to be practical. The person that is here to start a business. The fifth lines communicate through uh, or, or very powerfully. They have this magnetism, this, this glow that, that causes people to, to know that there's something special there and really want to follow them. So fifth lines are here to, to change behavior. They're here to change the way that the world operates in a very practical way. Unlike a six line, which is yours truly in this life's work sphere, off in la la land, being a visionary. So six line is the line of the teacher because six lines are here to change the way people think. And this is my line in this sphere. And so I intimately, uh, I've thought about it a lot. And the way that I communicate isn't really through anything that I say, it's through my aura, it's through my energy, it's through my example. Um, honestly, I don't have my vision clearly yet. I, it, it, six lines are infamous for, for being different than all of the other five lines in that their life's path, their structure is different. So six lines typically have three phases to their life. Up until 30, you're much more like a third line. 30 to 50, you're start, so you're, you're experiencing lots of different things because you need to know, you need to start to have this vision come together. 30 to 50, you're typically starting to lay down some roots, beginning to, to see where things are headed, but it's still foggy and I'm 38, so that's where I am right now. And then 50, you have a clear picture of that vision, but it takes your whole life to accrue that knowledge, to change you and what you want and how you operate. Six lines almost have to walk the path of all of the other five lines so that they can know that experience, so that they can understand how to help those people get to that next 
vision. So those are the six lines in the sphere of life's work. I'm going to now go into the sphere of evolution, just so that you can see how they change a little bit. Just remember that although the keynotes are different because it's a different sphere and therefore flavor, the energy is still exactly the same. So this first line where you're the creator, you're going within and you're coming out with something to bring to the world. The sphere of evolution, remember, is what drives your evolution, which is challenge and shadow and maybe some things that consciously we wouldn't choose, um, but develops our soul. So the first line here is no longer the creator, but it's about the self. It's about empowerment. It's about taking that challenge and understanding that it happens within you and that you have the power to overcome that challenge. And that when you do overcome that challenge, you have the creative potential to serve other people, but it happens inside of you. And the shadow there is, is self-esteem. You don't think that you can get through your challenge because you haven't gone in deep enough. Now, the second line here is the dancer in life's work. In evolution, it's about passion and relationships. So again, line two is all about flow and energy and exchange and um, not keeping things bottled up. And so there are some challenges that can come with that passion. It's very easy to cast blame. It's very easy for second lines to deny, I can't be the problem, I'm loosey-goosey and flowy, it's got to be you. Um, that is a shadow of that second line. You have to be careful that you don't put all of your energy out into the world. You have to remember that ultimately, although you shine through in partnership, your fulfillment still comes from within yourself. And then when you have that fulfillment in yourself is when you can interact with a relationship in a way that serves everyone. So it's still about flow, but the challenge now becomes not flowing too much or too little. All right, third, energy and experience is what the keynote is here. So the changer. So the, the energy to try lots of different things. And remember, this is your evolution. This is your challenge. A lot of those things might not work out. That doesn't change the fact that that's part of your life's path. My um, life's work gene key is number 32, the shadow of which is failure. And we can only see a failure if we zoom in on this one specific part of our life. If we zoom out and look at the whole context, many, many, many times that failure leads to something amazing. You are looking for enriching experiences, but you have to be careful of avoiding certain things, avoiding experiences, hiding from stuff by going and doing something new. You're not finishing the cycle, you're hiding away. Uh, and we can see how that energy of constantly wanting or needing change can get in the way of actually sitting in something with somebody and finishing it, or even sitting in something with yourself and finishing it. Fourth line is about, or keynoted, love and community. So we go from server to love and community because it is about service. Remember, one and four are resonant. The fourth line will shut down. Things are not going well and they'll peel inside of themselves and they will be miserable because they need that community. They need that love. That's what's going to pull them out. Ultimately though, you have to be careful not to compare yourselves to, to, to other people or worry about how somebody else is responding to your love. And that's the challenge of the server. Line five, 
was keynoted the fixer. Here it's keynoted power and projection. Remember, this is the line of power, the line of the leader, the line of practicality of doing things out in the world. This line is about amplification of things. So what the fourth line does one-on-one, -on -one, the fifth line does to massive groups. And the challenge there is pressure from other people, pressure to perform a certain way, to do a certain thing. It's easy to get off track from yourself. Another big challenge for the fifth line is manipulation. It can be really easy for fifth lines to manipulate people unconsciously because again, people look to fives as leaders and to, to help give them a way forward. And that can feel really good for your ego. And, and it can feel really good to help control a situation. So it's just something to be aware of in your evolution. Number or line number six is keynoted surrender and education. So I already told you that six line is different in that it takes a long time to put all of these pieces together, to have a vision that you can then share with the world. And most of the time you're talking about being 50 plus years old for that to happen. So surrender is about understanding that and trusting the flow of life and trusting nature and trusting that the universe and God knows a lot better than you know. The education side is because you are here to share that vision. I think a lot of times for me that can come off as me sitting on my high horse and preaching instead of educating. And I have to remind myself a teacher is here to bring something out of someone that's already inside, not to put something new inside their brain or their heart or their body. Line sixes need to be aware of seeking resolution, need to be aware of stepping in and stopping the flow because you think you know better. So those are the six lines through the sphere of evolution as well as life's work. I am debating on continuing on. I think I'm gonna split it off as an, another video. We're already probably at 20 plus minutes here. I'll do another video on your radiance and your purpose and what those six lines look like keynoted through those spheres. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you like this video, leave a comment for me for only one reason, which is I'm not sure what I'm meant to be doing yet. And this is an experiment for me. I hope it's helpful for you, but in my gene keys, in my pearl sequence for my vocation and my culture, I'm line ones in each of those, which means I create, right? Line one, I create from that core wound. My vocation comes from that. And then my line one in my culture, that's about how you fit into the group that you work with. And the first line solo inside is an entrepreneur. And so I don't think I'm designed to share Richard Rudd's wisdom. I'm here to create my version of whatever that may be. However, I can see this as a useful stepping stone to do that. Anyway, I just want to know if this is helpful. I want to know if I should keep doing them, if I should start something else. Um, I'm at a big pivot point for me and I love that you guys are, are helping me along that journey. So thank you and I'll see you soon.